see. Jesus Christ is risen today. Today is from the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 5 and verses 1 through 14. On this bright and early morning, we celebrate the most joyful sunrise since the creation of the world. On the first day of creation, God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the night from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. On the first day of the week, light came into the world. On the first day of the week, Christ rose from the dead. On the first day of the week, the Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit to fulfill the day of Pentecost. On the first day of the week, the church has, since her birth, celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But there is coming another day, a day when all of the saved of earth from all the history of the world shall gather once again to celebrate the risen Lamb of God, who is the eternal victor. We'll gather at his feet to sing his praises with a noble line of apostolic martyrs, with the great heroes of the Reformation, Luther and Calvin and Zwingli, John Huss, John Knox, and others, the multitudes of the great evangelists, the great theologians, and the great preachers who have thundered God's truth through the centuries. But as we gather, and perhaps most important of all, for this is where we fit, with all the humble men and women and boys, and girls who are just as precious in his sight as all of the mighty. The Apostle John sees us in the midst of the multitude of angels, in the midst of the living creatures, and all of the redeemed out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. 
In Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. And I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith to me, Weep not. Behold! The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Amen. Without the resurrection, none of what we have just read will ever happen. Without the res resurrection, there will be no glorious finale. Without the resurrection, there will be no angelic chorus joined by every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them. Without the resurrection, there will be no paean of praise from those who have been redeemed to God by the blood of the Lamb out of every kindred and tongue and people, and nation. Without the resurrection, we will never experience being made unto our God, kings and priests. Without the resurrection, we shall never reign with Christ on the earth. The resurrection is not only the truth of the past and the hope of the present, the resurrection is the guarantee of the glories of the future. Without the resurrection of Christ, we are, as Paul well puts it, of all men most miserable. The key to Revelation chapter 5 is that it is a celebration of the resurrection of the crucified Lamb of God. Look with me at the soul-moving narrative as it flows through the chapter. The chapter begins with a scroll. It begins with a mighty scroll, a scroll sealed with seven seals. 
That means that this is a scroll that is completely and perfectly sealed. These are royal seals that speak of authority. They are seals that speak of the security of the contents of the document. The document has not been tampered with. The document has not been altered. The document has not been changed. They are seals that have the personal authentication of God in heaven because they are seals on a document that is in the hand of the God of heaven who sits upon the throne. They are seals, as we later learn, that unleash the judgment and wrath of God Almighty upon the earth. Only someone with authority, someone with power to effect the judgment and wrath of God in holy anger will be open, able to open those seals. Only if someone can be found who is worthy to open the seals can then the judgment of God be unleashed. A mighty angel appears with a shout. He issues a challenge that rolls throughout the universe. Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? There are trillions of angels, billions of people, uncountable numbers of living creatures in heaven and earth and under the earth that hear the challenge. And there is silence. No one moves. They've all heard the challenge. And each knows within himself that he or she is not worthy. All are limited. All are finite. None has authority, power, or personal holiness needed to unleash the judgments of God. There's an ominous pause as the heart of every man and every woman is scanned and every eye is forced to look down in humility and awe. They are not even worthy to look at the scroll, much less to open it and read it. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. John has waited with anticipation and with excitement and perhaps with dread. John knows the wickedness of earth, its rebellion, its hatred for the Lord whom he loves. He has seen the death of all of the other apostles. He has seen the early martyrs go to their executioners with the praise of Christ on their lips. He himself is at that moment in exile working in the slave mines of Patmos at 96 years of age. He is the last of the apostles. Where is the promise of the Lord's return to judge the earth? But the challenge of the mighty angel goes unanswered. There is only silence as the reverberating voice of the angel settles into the distant reaches of space. John is in despair. Is this the end? Is this all that there is? Will sin and evil and wickedness and the hordes of hell win at the finish line? And so John weeps. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. But his weeping is premature. And how often our weeping is premature. There is a sovereign God in heaven, in whose hand the universe is in perfect control. Through his tears, John has not seen the one who is approaching the throne. An elder touches him and bids him to look up. The lion of the tribe of Judah has approached the throne. The one who is the root of David, the prophesied messianic king, has prevailed to open the book and the seals. Is there power? The lion has power. Is there the necessary birthright declaring the right to take the book? He is from the tribe of Judah, from whom the scepter would not depart. Is there authority? He is the root of David, the great king. 
John looks up, expecting to see power, expecting to see splendor, majesty, and a great roaring and a tearing of flesh by the lion. But what does he see? He sees a lamb. A lamb. The lamb is a sacrificial animal. The lamb is a weak animal. The lamb is a herbivore, not a carnivore. The lamb can never tear its prey or its enemies. A lamb never expresses anger. A lion is a powerful animal, a, a carnivore that tears its prey and its enemies in pieces. But John sees a lamb. However, it's a very unique lamb. It's a lamb that has already been sacrificed. In the Old Testament, the priest would take a perfect, spotless, innocent lamb and lead it to the altar. And there, the priest would slit its throat so that the blood would be poured out. And then the priest would offer that lamb as a burnt offering upon the altar until it was completely consumed. But here is a lamb as it had been slain, not about to be slain, but as it had been slain. But this lamb is not dead. It is not lying helplessly in a pool of blood at the foot of the altar. It is not burning in the flames being consumed. It is a standing lamb, even though it is a lamb that had already been slain. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth, and he, that is the lamb, came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. John expected to see a lion, but John saw a lamb. A lamb. But it is a lamb that is more powerful than any lion that John has ever seen before. This is a lamb that has such power that even after it has been slain, it can stand up. It can move. It can take a book. It can open the seals of the book. It can read the book. It can pronounce the judgments of the book. This is incredible power power over death itself. This is incredible authority. This is the incredible purity and holiness that does not flinch at the judgment of sin and wickedness and evil and the devil and his host. Who is this lamb? John the Baptist recognized him one day and also the day following with these words. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him this one who is the Lamb of God. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Verse 34. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. The Old Testament prophets had foretold this Lamb. This lamb that was born in Bethlehem where the shepherds kept the temple flocks of perfect lambs that would be used in the sacrifices. The lambs would be slain in perfect harmony with the law of the Old Testament that required that blood be shed for the remission of sin. 
But the book of Hebrews tells us the blood of bulls and goats can never take away sin. There had to be another perfect lamb, an innocent lamb, but a lamb that had a power that no earthly lamb would ever have. The lamb indeed had to be innocent and true, but the lamb also had to be infinite. The lamb had to be able to generate life, not merely be alive. The lamb had to be slain for sin, but the lamb had also to be alive after the sacrifice. The lamb that John sees in Revelation 5, the one that has been slain, but the one who is standing, the lamb that he sees is Jesus. And he sees him both as the crucified and slain lamb of God, but also as the risen Savior. The one who is not only alive, but is able to generate life after death. This lamb has the authority to open the seals because he died for sin. He has the power to open the seals because he can conquer even death itself. He has the blinding flash of purity and holiness to open the seals because he is the sinless lamb of God. This lamb is the risen Christ. Hallelujah. It is the risen Christ to whom we once again are introduced in all of his glory here in this chapter. It is the risen Christ that opens the seals of judgment on this sin-cursed earth. It is the risen Christ who is the sacrificial lamb with the power, the authority, the purity and holiness that stands before the throne of God and takes the scroll with the seven seals out of the hand of him who sits upon the throne. It is the risen Christ who has all power and authority in heaven and in earth. A dead Christ would have no authority. A dead Christ would have no power. A dead Christ would have only corruption, not purity and holiness. It is the risen Christ who brings us into all the rest of the promises of the book of Revelation. It is the risen Christ who orders the angels to pour each of their judgments upon the earth. It is the risen Christ at the end of the book of Revelation who rewards his servants, destroys his enemies, casts Satan into the bottomless pit, and then the one who sets up the great white throne judgment where all of the rebellious, unregenerate dead of all the ages are put on trial, found guilty, and are cast into hell along with the devil and his demons to join the Antichrist and the false prophet for all of eternity. It is the risen Christ who burns up the old sin-cursed earth and creates the new heavens and the new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. It is the risen Christ with whom we will sit down. Are you ready? With whom we will sit down at the marriage feast, not of the lion, but at the marriage feast of the Lamb. The lamb that John sees in Revelation 5 is the lamb with whom we will sit down at a marriage feast. What a beautiful picture it is. That is the risen Christ. The standing lamb is a risen lamb. The lamb that was slain but is standing is the risen Christ. You have no heavenly bridegroom if there is no risen Christ. You have no wedding feast of the lamb to look forward to if there is no risen Christ. You have no hope of heaven or rewards or blessing or rest from your labors if there is no risen Christ. Can you imagine looking forward to a wedding that has been promised? And you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and then you die, and all is darkness. And there's no light that breaks that darkness. There is no shout, the bridegroom cometh. There's no joyous procession that leads to the wedding supper. There's no final consummation with the one you love and for whom your heart has yearned all these years. 
If Christ is not risen, we are indeed of all men most miserable. There is no hope. The world drags on in sin and misery and despair. No. A thousand times no. There is hope. And it is a guaranteed hope because the Lamb is standing as it had been slain. And what should be our response? There is no better way to express it than that which we have read in our text for today. Because this is, in fact, how we will express it someday with the myriads of the angels and all of the redeemed. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, and we are among this chorus. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. That liveth, that liveth forever. And ever. Amen. Our gracious Heavenly Father, how we thank you for the risen Christ. How we thank you that the Lamb that was slain is the standing Lamb before whom all nations and kindred and tongues and people and all the angelic beings and all the, the living creatures and all the things above in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea worship and praise because he is the one who lives forever and ever. How we thank you for the risen Christ, the one who is our Savior, and in whom we can have perfect confidence because he lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.